The Mascarene coot is an extinct species of coot that inhabited the Mascarene Islands of Mauritius and Réunion. Long known from subfossil bones found in the Mare Ox Sangas swamp on the former island, but only assumed from descriptions to also have been present on the latter, remains have more recently been found on Réunion also. Early travelers' reports from Mauritius were, in reverse, generally assumed to refer to common moorhens, but it seems that this species only colonized the island after the extinction of the endemic coot. Rails often evolve flightlessness when adapting to isolated islands, free of mammalian predators. The red rail was a little larger than a chicken and had reddish, hair-like plumage. It has been compared to a kiwi or a limpkin in appearance and behavior. It is believed to have fed on invertebrates, and snail shells have been found with damage matching an attack by its beak. Human hunters took advantage of an attraction red rails had to red objects by using colored cloth to lure the birds so that they could be beaten with sticks. Saddle-backed Mauritius giant tortoise was previously numerous throughout Mauritius, both on the main island and on all of the surrounding islets. As Mauritius was the first of the Mascarene Islands to be settled, it was also the first to face the extermination of its native biodiversity, including the giant tortoises. The giant tortoise species, like many island species, were reportedly friendly, curious and not afraid of humans. With the arrival of the Dutch, vast numbers of both giant tortoise species were slaughtered, either for food, for humans or pigs, or to be burned for fat and oil. In addition, they introduced invasive alien species such as rats, cats and pigs, which ate the giant tortoises' eggs and hatchlings. The species was likely extinct on the main island of Mauritius by about 1700, and on most of the surrounding islets by 1735. The mascarine grey parakeet were said to be easy to hunt, as the capture of one would result in its calling out to summon the whole flock. They were also considered to be crop pests, and being such easy prey meant that they were extensively hunted. Coupled with deforestation, this pushed them into extinction. The anatomy of the mascarine grey parakeet suggests that its habits were largely terrestrial, and it may have eaten the fruits of the hurricane palm and the bottle palm, due to their abundance. Réunion Knight Aaron was not adapted to a terrestrial lifestyle, its wings were strong and its legs not adapted to chasing prey on foot, birds lived on fish. These birds, with the striated heron being the only species found, but, very rare. Thus, the Réunion Knight Heron probably became extinct around 1700. However, as there are no good reasons for its disappearance, neither habitat destruction nor introduced predators would have affected it much, nor does it seem to have been a favorite target for hunters. The Réunion Owl was a small owl that occurred on the Mascarene island of Réunion, but became extinct before any living birds were described, it is only known from subfossil bones. As the bird is not mentioned by any contemporary report, it was either very secretive or became extinct earlier than its congeners. At that time, the only introduced predators were pigs. Inferring from the local ecology, it is likely that the birds succumbed to predation by rats and perhaps also cats as they must have been flight-worthy enough to avoid the pigs, and thus only became extinct after Dubois' visit, at some date closer to the year 1700. If the bird was ground nesting, however, it might have been extinct even by the time Dubois did not record it, but this hypothesis does not seem to agree what can be inferred from the rather long survival of its Mauritius relative. Réunion Crestral was larger than its relative with males being noticeably smaller than females. This trait, while present in most birds of prey, is most pronounced in the larger, bird-eating species and reduces between sex competition by niche differentiation. It can be assumed that the bird was of the same generally brownish coloration as its closest relatives. The extinction of the Réunion Kestrel, which thus seems to have been complete around 1700, is something of a mystery, just as that of the Réunion Owl. Introduced predators were not present in numbers at that time and even rats probably would not have presented much of a problem for the birds. Certainly, they were considered a pest as they fed on poultry, 
but hunting is unlikely to have been able to reduce their population much at such an early time, as evidenced by the continuous survival of the Marsh Harrier, which was heavily persecuted for centuries for the same reason. Since the Réunion pink pigeon was only mentioned explicitly by Dubois, little can be said about its extinction. It seems likely that introduced rats and cats, combined with excessive hunting, were the causes of the bird's extinction. The Réunion swampen may have been similar to the Takahe. While easily hunted, it was a fast runner and able to fly, though reluctantly. It may have fed on plant matter and invertebrates, as other swampens, and was said to nest among grasses and aquatic ferns. It was only found on the Plain des Coffres Plateau, where it may have retreated to during the latter part of its existence, whereas other swampens inhabit lowland swamps. While the last unequivocal account is from 1730, it may have survived until 1763, but overhunting and the introduction of cats probably drove it to extinction. St. Helena hoopoe was endemic to the island of St. Helena. It was most likely flightless. It's not clear when it gets extinct. Sardinian pica diet was strictly vegetarian. Fossilized mass accumulations of broken bones suggest that it was a major source of food for many predators in the Pleistocene, like birds of prey. Some people believe that the Sardinian pica still lives in the wild interior of Corsica, and many others believe that it went extinct much more recently than scientific estimates. There are occasionally sightings of this pica, but so far none of them has been verified. Due to the lack of physical remains, and the possibility that sightings were of macaws from the South American mainland, doubts have been raised about the existence of the lesser Antillean macaw. According to contemporary descriptions, its body was red and the wings were red, blue and yellow, apart from the smaller size and the all-red coloration of the tail feathers, it resembled the scarlet macaw and may, therefore, have been a close relative of that species. The bird ate fruit, including the poisonous manchineal, was monogamous, nested in trees and laid two eggs once or twice a year. Early writers described it as being abundant in Guadeloupe, but it was becoming rare by 1760, and only survived in uninhabited areas. Disease and hunting by humans are thought to have eradicated it shortly afterward. The lesser Antillean macaw is one of 13 extinct macaw species that have been proposed to have lived in the Caribbean islands. Many of these species are now considered dubious because only three are known from physical remains, and there are no extant endemic macaws on the islands today. According to contemporary descriptions, the head, neck and underparts of the Guadeloupe Amazon were mainly violet or slate in color, mixed with green and black, the back was brownish-green, and the wings were green, yellow and red. It had iridescent feathers, and was able to raise a ruff of feathers around its neck. The bird fed on fruits and nuts, and the male and female took turns sitting on the nest. It was eaten by French settlers, who also destroyed its habitat. Rare by 1779, it appears to have become extinct by the end of the 18th century.
Rodriguez's night heron was mainly terrestrial, unwary, and only flew when chased, although even in that case they initially tried to escape by running. They apparently laid greenish eggs, one of their favorite foods was geckos. Analysis of the fossil remains concluded that the bill of the species was very strong and that it was evolving towards flightlessness. The bird appears to have been hunted to extinction in the mid-18th century. Rodriguez parrot was the largest parrot on Rodriguez, and it had the largest head of any mascarine parrot. It may have looked similar to the great billed parrot. By the time it was discovered, it frequented and nested on islets off southern Rodriguez, where introduced rats were absent, and fed on the seeds of the shrub. The species is known from subfossil bones and from mentions in contemporary accounts. It was last mentioned in 1761, and probably became extinct soon after, perhaps due to a combination of predation by rats, deforestation, and hunting by humans. Rodriguez owl probably was unable to cope with the ecological alterations and the predation which resulted from the human settlement and the large rat population. The bird became apparently extinct in the mid-18th century, as Rodriguez is quite a small island. The Rodriguez rail fed on the eggs of the now extinct Cylindraspis tortoises, three species of which lived on Rodriguez. Sexual dimorphism may have reflected differences in diet between the sexes. It is believed to have become extinct in the mid-18th century because of predation by introduced cats and destruction of its habitat by tortoise hunters. Many other species endemic to Rodriguez became extinct after humans arrived, and the island's ecosystem was heavily damaged. Before humans arrived, forests covered the island entirely, but very little of those remain today. Rodriguez solitaires grew to the size of swans, and demonstrated pronounced sexual dimorphism. It laid a single egg that was incubated in turn by both sexes. Gizzard stones helped digest its food, which included fruit and seeds. The Rodriguez solitaire probably became extinct sometime between the 1730s and 1760s, the exact date is unknown. Its disappearance coincided with the tortoise trade between 1730 and 1750. Traders burned off vegetation, hunted solitaires and imported cats and pigs that preyed on eggs and chicks. Cats were blamed for decimating the species, but that it was due to hunting by humans instead. Steller sea cow is an extinct Cyrenian described by Georg Wilhelm Steller in 1741. At that time, it was found only around the Commander Islands in the Bering Sea between Alaska and Russia. Its range was more extensive during the Pleistocene epoch, and it is possible that the animal and humans previously interacted. It had a thicker layer of blubber than other members of the Cyrenians, an adaptation to the cold waters of its environment. Its tail was forked, like that of whales or dugongs. Lacking true teeth, it had an array of white bristles on its upper lip and two keratinous plates within its mouth for chewing. It fed mainly on kelp, and communicated with sighs and snorting sounds. Evidence suggests it was a monogamous and social animal living in small family groups and raising its young, similar to modern Cyrenians. Stellar's sea cow was quickly wiped out by fur traders, seal hunters, it was also hunted to collect its valuable subcutaneous fat. The first attempt to hunt the animal by Steller and the other crew members was unsuccessful due to its strength and thick hide. They had attempted to impale it and haul it to shore using a large hook and heavy cable, but the crew could not pierce its skin. In a second attempt a month later a harpooner speared an animal, and men on shore hauled it in while others repeatedly stabbed it with bayonets. It was dragged into shallow waters, and the crew waited until the tide receded and it was beached to butcher it. After this, they were hunted with relative ease, the challenge being in hauling the animal back to shore. The presence of stellar sea cows in the Aleutian Islands may have caused the Aleut people to migrate westward to hunt them. This possibly led to the sea cow's extinction in that area, assuming the animals survived in that region into the Holocene epoch, but there is no archaeological evidence.
the bluebeck was a grazer, and may have calved where rainfall, and thus the availability of grasses, would peak. The bluebeck was confined to the southwestern cape when encountered by Europeans, but fossil evidence and rock paintings show that it originally had a larger distribution. The coat was a uniform bluish-gray, with a pale whitish belly. Europeans encountered the bluebeck in the 17th century, but it was already uncommon by then perhaps due to its preferred grassland habitat having been reduced. Sea level changes during the early Holocene may also have contributed to its decline by disrupting the population. The first published mention of the bluebeck is from 1681, and few descriptions of the animal were written while it existed. The few 18th century illustrations appear to have been based on stuffed specimens. Hunted by European settlers, the bluebeck became extinct around 1800. It was the first large African mammal to face extinction in historical times. Carpathian wisent began to die out about a hundred years earlier than its very close cousin, the Caucasian wisent, probably because it lived nearer to Central Europe. The last Carpathian wisent was shot in Marimers in 1852 and the subspecies is now entirely extinct. 